Hi team, Ace is up here for Pokenerve. Welcome back again. We're talking about ICM and uh, focusing this video on the dynamic when uh, the action is on you, as is the case with the player on the button here and you're short. What range do you jam? How is it different from a regular MTT? Uh, and also just from Chip EV when we've got the uh, ICM effect and of course PKOs in the mix, uh, knockouts, bounties that can be won in the mix as well. So. We see here the jam from the M6 player and small blind does get out of the way. They have a pretty big stack, so that's definitely something that you want to be aware of because you can expect bigger stacks to call more liberally, of course. Uh, you can see that the big blind player was only left with 50,000 after they made the call, but they did get to scoop the pot and they called with king queen and the player on the button had ace three. So what do we think about this jam and call here? With seven players remaining, these are the knockouts. These are the pay jumps. Is this a good play? Pretty close, isn't it? So let's pull out the trusty HRC and uh, see what this player with the M6 or just over. Uh, what's that? 15-ish big blinds, 16 big blinds. Uh, should be jamming in a PKO tournament in this spot. So uh, we can see here that they actually want to be jamming uh, this range here, 23.4% of hands. And we can see that the ace two off is actually not in the mix. Uh, sorry, ace three off. So yeah, they've uh, jammed a little bit too loosely here. And this is a common thing that you see in PKOs where players are, of course, used to playing regular MTTs uh, and uh, jamming that range. And, uh, you know, especially if you think about it in terms of chip EV uh, or, you know, if you're using power numbers, well, Ace-3 off has a PN of 16 and you had an M, you know, of 6-ish with two players behind you and you needed a PN of 12. So you're definitely clear of the bar. You know you're going to have a profitable jam when it comes to chip EV. But uh, when it comes to ICM, of course, you don't want to put your stack at risk. Uh, and so that forces you to tighten up. And you can see here that even if this was a regular MTT with no bounties, uh, the correct range from the button play here is actually 35% of hands and ace two off is, is break even and ace three off is you know basically break even, maybe just making a tiny bit we can see, um, but uh, really borderline. Uh, and that's you know just in a regular MTT. So this range here, and again, you know, they're using some of these suited connectors and gappers that we aren't seeing in a PKO, of course. We prefer more high card value and more raw equity since we anticipate our opponents calling wider behind. Uh, this player does have a, you know, a decent bounty on their head, so they expect to get called more than a regular MTT, of course. And if we compare it to Chip EV, obviously, as we just said, the PN, very clear of the bar. We know that it's going to be profitable and not too surprisingly, it is quite profitable. Uh, and, you know, if it was midway through a PKO, of course, you'd be pretty happy to jam here because you might get called uh, by some worse hands from the players behind, especially the bigger stack, calling wide to get your knockout. Uh, and in that sort of dynamic, you're more focused on trying to get chips. You're not risking as much as you are in this situation where you're at the final table and there's big pay jumps. And that's why we're seeing this real difference here and... Uh, you know, why we're seeing these, uh, you know, weaker aces uh, are actually a mistake to be jamming in this spot. So be careful. Uh, you can see that the players behind are calling with 15.3%. So pretty loosely from the small blind with a big stack. And even the big blind player here who we said was only going to be left with a couple of big blinds or two and a half big blinds if they lost the pot, they're calling pretty loosely with 13% of hands. And that's because they are, you know, the second shot of stack. And uh, this is an opportunity for them to sort of get back in it. Um, as such a short stack, they can afford to sort of go for it here uh, and try and get that knockout bonus as well since they cover the button player and the small blind play here isolating, of course, uh, with almost any pair and, uh, you know, most of the suited aces and ace eight off plus best of the suited broadways and king queen. Um, so collectively, that's around 28 and a half percent. And you can see here, it was collectively around 21%. Uh, so we're seeing around, you know, seven or just over percent an increase 
from a regular tournament to a PKO tournament in terms of the calls, the amount of the frequency that you expect to get called from the two players behind. And that's really the reason why uh, we're seeing that although it might be profitable in a normal MTT, albeit just, uh, in a PKO, you need to uh, tighten up. This is the range here that you should be jamming. Ace three off is not in there. Uh, so you just need to be careful because your, your stack is just more valuable. You can't afford to put it at risk and be the next to bust. And you know those players behind are, are calling wider than normal to get your uh, knockout. So uh, take that into account. It's a really important point to make that adjustment in PKO tournaments at the final table when you're short. Uh, and I think a lot of players aren't making it as well. So... Uh, if you are one of the players behind that gets to call, keep that in mind that your opponents might not even be jamming the correct range. And you know, if we did just play around with it here and added in uh, some of this stuff here, maybe even the Sioux connectors, we're playing a little bit more like it's a regular tournament, jamming something like this. It's thirty-one percent of hands. If you're that small blind. You've gone from 15 to 22% now. So uh, you're really isolating quite wide now uh, because you know your opponent is, is jamming too loosely and you can take advantage of that. And the same thing, of course, can be said uh, for the player in the big blind who's who's jumped around 6% as well, 5 or 6% calling a lot looser. So uh, if you think your opponent is making that mistake, you can really capitalize on it. Um, but if you are the player jamming first in, of course, just remember that you've got to be careful and not, not put your stack at risk when you expect to get called at a higher frequency and uh, miss out on or you know potentially being the next to bust you want to uh, try and hang on and move up in the pay uh, since we are at the final table want to take your game to the next level make sure you check out our mtt poker course and please like and subscribe for more content thanks for watching